today I'm going to introduce you to a, a thing I put together which is kind of an extension on the Ableton Live effect looper. So uh, the looper um, is this effect in live um, which is this uh, thing made for real-time looping where people can um, do real-time audio looping um, through a microphone or you can use synths if you want and you, you, it's, it's, it's made for doing it on the fly for a f with a foot pedal or a quick push of a button so people who really want to just loop and layer things really really quickly and do a live performance and that means now one of the one of the problems with doing this is as you use these loopers every time you make a pass every time you re-record a new loop it combines it with the previous one and then flattens it out and overdubs it again and again and again. So each time you actually add a new layer, it just compresses it down and then when you're finished, you can't actually extract the layers out. So you, let's say you have kind of 20 layers going in your, in your loop that you've all done with your mouth and um, at the end of it, you want to actually mix it down into a tune instead of a live performance. Um, you can't actually extract it. So that's that's been a bit of a problem with, um, with, with, with people with this device. Um, and I'm, I'm going to offer one way of overcoming this using this IAC driver method. Um, now it's not ideal and it's, well, it's, it, 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 it works for me. Using looping in this kind of manner is a very personalized thing. So um, it probably might need to be tweaked if you actually use the looper. It might need to be tweaked how you like it. But this is more to give an example of how you can use IAC drivers um, pretty intuitively to, to get results like this, which aren't really supposed to happen. So this is the um, this is what it looks like when you first open it up, um, and I'll, I'll go through this um, as simply as I can. Um, so we've got basically the first track here. This is called Sample. Now the way this looper works is it has a looper, but it also has an audio track dedicated to recording the layers in the background. So you'll continue to use the looper in your looping track, but this little track in the background will record samples at a specific length each layer of the loop. So this is where everything gets recorded in this channel and you can go back and pick out where each individual um, samples you want from there. Um, over here in this group we have a group called Looper. This simply has three tracks, each with a looper on it. We've got one bar, two bars, four bars. And this is because I've put three different lengths of looper here. I mean you can have any as many as you want in here, you can change the length to anything you want. But for now we've got a one bar, you see it will record for one bar, two bars, and then four bars. So this is, this is just your preference, I mean you, you'll just use one of these at, at once. So that's all good, so that's where the actual looping happens. Now over to the next group, this is where the IAC stuff comes in, this is the interesting part. If I open up the triggers group, you'll see we have another three tracks. We have one group that's it's called sample trigger, one group that's called looper start, and one group which is called click. And we've got three scenes in each of these, each one of these scenes correlates to each one of these three loopers here. So this first track in this triggers group, it's called Sample Trigger, and if you notice down at the bottom in the MIDI 2 area, we've got the MIDI 2 IAC Driver Bus 1, which is the IAC Driver Bus, which you talked about in the first video. So anything that happens in this MIDI track, which it is a MIDI track, and these are MIDI clips, it'll send out of Ableton and then back into Ableton, and Ableton will take the data from these MIDI clips and do something depending on what that data is. So let's have a look at this one bar loop we've got here. If we look, Okay, we've double clicked it, we've opened it up, it's a pretty simple MIDI clip and we'll see we go chromatically, there's a note, every single bar from C3 up, all the way up, so it goes chromatically up, if I just zoom in a bit so you can see that a bit better. So we've got C3, C sharp, D, D sharp on each bar, there's bar 2, there's bar 3, there's bar 4, each bar a new note chromatically upwards and this goes up and up and up until we hit... What have we got at the top here? This would be D sharp 8. Um, the reason it's D sharp 8 is because I've just done this 64 times just to keep it in a nice kind of mathematically structured way. So there's 64 different notes in between um, this, this C and this D sharp up here. And they go on each bar. So that's interesting. So if I was to play this, it would send the notes out. But we're going to have to do something with these notes once they get sent back into Ableton. Remember, if we go into the preferences, go to our MIDI sync, we can see remote on is for the input of the IAC driver. So what is, are these notes going to go to? Well, if we hit MIDI mode, and let's have a look over on the sample channel, each one of these um, clip slots here is being assigned a chromatic note, which corresponds to each note which is within this one bar loop. So when 
this um, sample trigger loop bar one plays C3, it's going to record that one. When it played C sharp, it's going to record that one. And so on, down and down and down until we get to the 64th one, which is the D sharp 8. So, in theory, if we hit play, whoopsie dude, hit that. So if we hit play on this, let's have a look. It's going to record, and it's doing it really, really, really fast because I've got the tempo on 999. If I bring this down to, let's say, 120. See how each bar, you can count it here, four, four. See how each bar, it's recording a new loop for us. Fantastic. So that's the whole idea of using IAC drivers to trigger the separate layering system in the background. I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to push stop clips here and stop up the top to take it back to the start. We've also got two bars here, but you'll notice that it's the same thing, but every single chromatic note is two bars long rather than, well, it starts every two bars rather than every one bar. And that also goes all the way up to D sharp 8, but this time it's 127. Um, also, there's also um, four bars, which of course does the exact same thing, but has a note on every fourth bar. So... This is, um, that's, that's, that's the automation side of recording the layers. Now over here, we've got a looper start um, track. Now this kind of is the same thing, but if we look at this, this just has a single note on C negative 1, C minus 1. And what this does is if we go into MIDI mode and look at the looper start 1 bar, you can see that the, um, the multi-purpose, what the hell is this called, I always forget, it's such a big word, info... Multi-purpose transport button, you see the multi-purpose transport button is set to um, one, uh, sorry, channel one, C negative one. If we go over to the second looper, you'll see it's C sharp negative one, and the fourth one is D negative one. And we notice that, um, oops, if we go out of MIDI mode and look at these individual clips, you see there's the C sharp, and there's the D negative. So all this, clip, all this track does here is send the start cue to either one of these three things, depending on whether you've chosen one bar, two bars, or four bars. And one thing to note here is you do need to set your global quantize on whatever you plan on doing. If you plan on doing it two bars, you need to go two bars, because as soon as you hit this, the two bar one is going to wait however long the global quantize is. So this has to be set the same. We'll go back to one bar for now. So that's, that's pretty straightforward, and you'll also see it does use the IAC driver, again, to send out the MIDI note and to trigger it back into one of these three. The final track is a simple click track just to give you a, um, a, a basic um, a, a timing, so you can just do it in time when it starts. Um, all this is is an impulse with just a single little click sound on it with, that plays on every beat. So on the one bar, we've just got one bar, it'll count you in one, two, three, four, and that will be before everything starts playing. In two, we've got two bars, and in four, we've got four bars. Now that's basically the gist of the triggers, um, and we can just trigger all three of these by hitting a single scene. So th this is all we need to click, and we're away, and we can start going, and everything will happen. Hopefully. Let's give it a go. I'm going to put my headphones on because I need to actually hear what I'm doing here. Um, so... Let's play this first scene, it'll give us a click track, and then I'm just going to clap my hands or something. See how the one bar looper, see how the one bar looper, see how the one bar looper is looping, see how the with one my bar voice. looper is looping, see how the with one bar voice. looper is looping, see how the with one bar voice. looper is looping, see how the with one bar voice. looper is looping, see how the with one bar voice. looper is looping, see how the one bar looper is looping, see how the one bar looper is looping, see how the one bar looper is looping, see how the Excellent. So this is actually looped like it normally should, um, as being a looper, and we've recorded our samples, our each individual samples here. There's me being stupid. Here's the click, and so on. And this will keep going all the way up until 64. So now, once we're finished, we can go back and we can extract the things that we actually liked about that little jam session we had. Um, I'm going to stop all clips here and just quickly show you the other two really quick. So stop clips. Um, we can just delete all these. We don't need these. Delete. You need to stop to go back to one. And another important thing is you need to clear the looper. Um, what I've done in this set, if we go into key mode, is I've just set the clear for each of the three loopers to the button one. So if we push one, it's just going to simply clear all the loopers for us, which is quite important. You need to do this. Okay, that's great. Now to do the two bars one, we simply go to global quantize, set it to two, go play, give us a two bar counting.
but you can probably tell I'm not fantastic at doing this whole um, could be on thing. Really very cool. Um, very cool. And the fourth one, let's just do it again. Stop, stop, hit the one key, and we'll go to four bars and go play. It'll give us quite a long count in. Etc. Etc. Um, yeah. So that's um, that's that's how I've done it. That's how I've used the IAC drivers. Again, this is more of an example to give you to show you some how this how cool this thing is and how how you can build these really complex automated systems just using them. Um, yeah. And and I mean you can you can tone this into any way you want. I've just done this how I like it. I mean you may have various different ways of, of, of using the looper or dreaming dreams of ways of using the looper which you didn't think were possible but you can probably achieve them with doing this. Cool, so that's all I'm going to say on this one. You can go and you can download this live set here at my website tomcosm.com. Go grab it, have a play with it yourself and make sure you watch the next one. We're going to get even more deeper into IAC drivers. Cheers, thanks. <laughs>